Yes, uh, I'm here again, if you were here for the first time. So this is a short talk of a feature that I'm implementing, a fix for uh, an old uh, performance regression and replication from global transaction ID. And again, I'm Festi Nielsen, I'm a long-term Python redeveloper, and then a lot of replication features, and a long-time free software developer and also con independent consultant. So, so the problem here is uh, when the slave connects to the master, how long does it take? So what happens when the slave connects to the master? We had the, so we had before global transaction ID, it was very simple. Uh, the bin log consists of different files, called like this. And the position on the slave, you would say, I want to continue replication from this file and this also into so the file. So you have like the GTIDs in the file and we have some position. So that's very easy for the master to start the slave replicating. You open the file and you see to the number and that's fast. And then you start sending the events. All good. And then we implemented global transaction ID. I and mean, global transaction ID is now not, uh, we don't identify, I mean, it's a kind of this uh, identifier which is not directly related to the data on the master. And it, it's even not just necessarily just one position, it can be multiple positions related to multi sort and so on. Talked about that in the other talk. So, how do we find the place to start? Well, the easy answer is we start from the start of the file and then we scan until we find the right position. And that's how it was implemented first. So, we could release and uh, works fine. It's the bin log files is one gigabyte default uh, size, so it's slow. And uh, of course, I realized this, <laughs> that it was uh, not the best solution. So I filed an MDEV for this. And I was looking in the summer. And I just want to share my kind of dismay because it's 10 years ago. So sorry for 10 years of performance regression, but at least I'm fixing it now. Sometimes if that happens, I guess. Yes, but so what's the solution? So the problem is that we have to scan the bin log like this serially, and we don't want to do that. So we will make an index, which allows us to quickly look up in the index. You have a GTID position. What is the corresponding place in the bin log to start? And so this is from the implementation I have now, where you see the, the normal bin log files as an extra file written. And you can see it's uh, quite small, typically it's like, 0.3%, so the space overhead is very moderate. And you can look up the GTID position and find the place to start. You can also go the other way. This is actually used for when you connect. So when the slave connects, like after an upgrade, it connects with the old style position, but uh, GTID then finds the corresponding GTID position. Why does it do that? It's not necessary, no, but that makes it tr trivial for the user to switch to GTID. You just because it already knows the position, so that's a upgrade uh, feature. But it costs. Oh, so yeah. The yeah. overhead. Could you explain just briefly the overhead? Uh, yes. So so you see, before we had only this master bin. That one. That two. We had only the bin log files, and they have size of I one agree. gigabyte. I but see. we now create an extra file, and it has a size of three megabytes. So we are using extra space, but it's only 0.3%. I mean, it depends, but it's something like that, an order. So I think that's very reasonable for fixing this. Uh, we only spend 1.3% uh, more space. I mean, you can actually also adjust this, but I think 0.3% is fine. So this is uh, my proposed solution. And so uh, I did some benchmark. And uh, just to see uh, for, the, for the prototype implementation, so what we do here is I ran a suspense write only just to have some data, wrote some bin log files, uh, default size, one gigabyte. Uh, with this benchmark, it, there's approximately a bit more than a million transactions in each bin log file. So we have to scan at most up to 1 million or 1.3 million. And I tried to time how long does it take the sl for the slave to connect to the master and replicate one transaction in GTID mode in 10.11 and in uh, using this uh, new implementation of the GTI index, starting at different positions. If you start at the start of the bin log file, it's fast. Yeah. And you can have different uh, places. And what we see is that uh, before it increases linearly, right, it gets up to one second around 
So don't take these numbers, the absolute numbers too literally. It's uh, running on my laptop, everything is in memory, there's no encryption. Yes, okay. Can you also benchmark how long it takes to write, uh, I mean, the overhead of maintaining Yes, uh, I'll come back to that. That's a very little overhead, but it's a good point. Uh, so, uh, yes, so you see with the index, it's basically independent because the overhead I'm looking up at the index is, it disappears compared to the other overhead uh, of connecting. So that's a good result. The number of read operations, uh, of course, depends on the size of your transactions. So the smaller transactions, the more reads, and therefore... Yeah, so this would be slower, but this would not. Yes. Um, yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, the other direction, looking up, the, you have the position and you want to find the corresponding DTID to switch to DTID position at time that at actually time that there's a, there's a function, GTID bitlock post, it does this lookup, and you can see how dramatic just, so this only does the, the lookup, it doesn't do the overhead of the slave version, you can see that it's, uh, it's very fast to look up at the GTI index, right, it's very quickly, and, and it's, of course, very fast. it's just, of course, you have to scan a million GTIDs or you look up at an index. This, of course, the first one. But this is also solved. So this solves the performance regression for the slave that's not using GTID, which is, uh, in a sense, worse, right? It's a regression for existing, but it's 10 years ago. Yes, so the benchmark looked good. The left column is physical file position. The left yes, so this is different places in the benchmark position. So it takes uh, just to, f to scan to the 80% mark of the bin logs of 800 megabytes and find the corresponding TGI position. It's actually only 0.3 seconds on my laptop. So it, it is fast, actually. So that's probably why people have been able to live with it for 10 years. But it's still an issue, I think, because imagine the master shut down and then it comes back up and it has 20 slaves. They're all going to do this. Yeah. Uh, and actually, it's more expensive here, right? It's, we're all going to do this. Uh, and what if it's encrypted? You have to decrypt it, yes? Yeah, so, so the, uh, maybe I should elaborate on that. So it's, it, you don't need it for the slave, but I, it was implemented to do it anyway. And the reason for that is that it allows you, if you're on ten, five, five or something, what well, was it? Before 10 zero, before DGID, you have an installation, then you upgrade to 10 zero. And now you want to switch to DTID. You just start the slave in non-DTID mode, then you stop it, and at that point it has downloaded the new DTID position. Then you just say change master to master use DTID equals to slave plus, and then you start it. You don't have to do any other migration. So it was a usability function to, to automatically find the DTID position when you upgrade to use DTID, or later. And the, so the function will run on the master. Yes, so the slave will ask the master to run this function on the master and it will return the result. And that's also expensive. So in the, the regression is not just for DTID slaves, but also for, for non-DTID. Okay. So this is uh, how it's implemented. I'm using a B plus tree. It's a classic structure to do on disk indexes. Uh, it's, um, so it, the keys are pairs of the DTID position and the bin log position. They solve the same way, they follow one. The other. So you can look up a GTID and get the binlock position. You can also look up the position and get the GTID. If the index is missing because, well, because it was an upgrade. You, you say you implemented both ways? Yes. It's kind of, it, it, it's, they, they follow, I mean, the order, the, the, the order is the kind of one-to-one -one correspondence and the order is the same. So that's why you kind of have dual key. Mm -hmm. that's a, so the, it's a modified B-tree structure. Yeah, if the index is not there, if an upgrade, or if there is some, yeah, I mean, the DBA removed it, or it's, I mean, you can fall back to the old method. So it's, it's not critical. You don't break replication if the index is not there. Uh, it's much simpler to do this than a full B3 implementation because the bin log is always just written serially and the order of the keys is the same. So you never have to split a node or, or do anything, it's just, um, you're just appending to the tree. 
So it's maybe more like a lock structured merge tree if you're familiar with those, but there's no need for merges because the bin locked files have a fixed size and then you write a new one. So, uh, so it's much simpler implementation. And, and the way it actually works is how I try to write the tree, just how it's written. You just start writing out, putting notes uh, in the memory buffer. And when you, once you fill out a leak page, you just push it to this. And then you put a record in the next level. And when that's full, you flush that to disk. And it's, um, uh, so that it makes the implementation relatively simple. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, page space. It's an advantage. I mean, you write one page at a time. That's very good because it makes it easier to read it. You can just sit to the end of the file. You know where the end is of the page. And then you can see if, if that's not there, then the page's index is partially written. You have to recover it. It's using crash recovery. Uh, this, along with the bin log file. So if the bin log should crash, then you will cover the bin log, and while you recover the bin log, you reconstruct the index. So they crash safe. Yeah. I had a slide. Uh, yes, so, so again, you asked about uh, the, the overhead. And it, I, it's, I think it's a valid, it's, it's, you have to, when you do the GTID, you're running under this lock, uh, lock underscore lock. The bin log, which is highly contended, so you don't want to like flush out this do IO to the index if you can avoid it, and that's why I implemented an asynchronous code path. So the only thing you do is that you uh, you just put you send the basically you send the, the record you send it to the bin log background thread, and it will write the index in the background. So it happens in a separate thread when there's so so that's why it's. Uh, has minimal impact on the performance. Would be interesting to measure, of course. Uh, and you don't, especially you don't have a lot of overhead when you do this. Uh, and it starts working uh, when this bin log, uh, yeah, bin log going to so the bin log, bin log background thread when it does this work. Yes, but, but yes, it uses the same thread. Uh, so the bin log, the same thread it was used before, it was only doing checkpoints. Now it's also doing this. But it's uh, you do this for every transaction, or actually for every, every for every you can have it sparse. So like, I would I'll implement it so that it's for every ten transactions you will flush because there's a little point in it doesn't really matter. It's no point in searching for like the exact GTID because it, in the in the index because you anyway have to. I mean you can as, just as well scan ten. 10 GTIDs in the right. in the bin log file in, that's in the index, it's about the same. So, uh, so but it's configurable, or it will be configurable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think time is out. So uh, there are using prefix compression to, to reduce the size, but it's a technical detail. You can ask me afterwards. Uh, this is what's about this. Uh, you could write only, you can, uh, it's, it's fast. So you, could, you, don't, you can write every 10, one in every 10 GTID. Uh, uh, yes, so it's, uh, I have a working implementation. It needs some cleanup. I also uh, want, I mean, I also need to make the user interface for the configuration and testing, but also that really if somebody is interested in working with me or having this or reviewing it or uh, using it, then uh, let me know. Uh, and hopefully, I'm not sure, 10.3, 10.4, uh, it sounds like 10.4, maybe there's a six, yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, yes, so that's it. Questions? What's about the last week? This one? Yeah, so so, uh, so I, I mentioned briefly that this uh, index is page-based, so it means that yeah, you write it out in pages, like 4K pages. Every node is a 4K page. Uh, and the bin log doesn't have that property. The bin log, you just have, a, so it's a, a flat file, not a text file, but it's actually event by event. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have any structure apart from a, a flat, it's, it's just a flat file. And that has, uh, that gives some problems because why do we even have to do this? If the bin log was page based, we could do binary searching. We could like search to the middle. We want to search to the middle of the bin log. Is this the right place or is it too far? And then we could do, but we cannot do that because if we go to the middle of the bin log, we don't know if it's a start of an event or if it's something that looks like an event, but really it was a blob insert. So, so you cannot, the only way you can do anything with a bin log file is to read it serially from the start. And that's a limitation. So 
but it's a kind of crazy wild uh, long-term idea. Could we do use, could we have just one file instead of having this extra index? Could the bin log file be made into a better, more mature log implementation where you have a page space and you can have the index within the file? It's an idea for them. Right, but uh, you already have this parsing that allow you to somehow get to the, you know, the, right? No, I mean, with the index? No, you have a sparse index that points to every end. Yeah, so with the index, I can do it. Yeah, but it would maybe be better if we only had the index and then had the data in the index, like cluster index. I don't see how you would you utilize the fact that uh, bin log records are page organized. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. When you, when you saw the, the potential use case would be to uh, use a binary search, basically to be able to do the tweet to arrive yeah. at the page. You can use parsing this already. Yeah, maybe that's probably. Yeah, it's uh, maybe. It's, uh, yeah. I don't have a particular. I don't have a. a yeah, I don't have a particular. I, I remember. I just remember that I had sometimes this way the bin log. It's also just whenever you're writing. A f Actually, that's one case. So, whenever you're writing a new event to the bin log, say a hundred byte event, you're extending the length of the file. It's a file that's you to the operating system. It's a pending. So the file was 10k long, and now it's 10. K and 100 bytes long. Mm -hmm. So and then you sync, you sync the, the, the f sync the file because you need to make it durable, and that requires the operating system to first exactly. sync the data to disk. But then the metadata, the length of the file, which is somewhere else, it also has to be synced to disk. So it's a double cost of writing to the disk when you have a file that's being all the time increasing the length. If you have a page based log, you can pre-allocate it, and then you can just write one just the data. And because it's a page page, you can detect that the data, the extra space, you have around 100 bytes, but that's 500 more bytes. But you know, you know because it's a page page, you can see that it's uh, empty space and not the middle of a blob. So that's, uh, that's uh, one reason. Second. Page -based, but I can just bring on a page, 10 gigabytes of numbers. <laughs> and then detect it by having zeros. Of the event, the event header, or a zero, yeah. Maybe that's uh, if, if you're sure that no event can start with a lot of zero. No, it's okay. probably true, yeah. Yeah. Just the type. The, if the type is if the type is zero or missing, yeah. Maybe that's a good way to do. It. Maybe that's an easy way to do it. Yeah. Good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so why would bin log is binary file, not for example, Yeah, it's. Uh, so, so there are different reasons for that. One critical reason is that uh, when you allocate, when do you allocate the GGID? The GGID is written into the transaction at the start, and the GGIDs have to be in increasing, monotonically increasing, and they have to be increasing in the same order as the uh, InnoDB uh, sequence numbers in uh, redo log, because so that you can do a consistent backup. Uh, I can explain that more after maybe. So you have to have a uh, the bin log, the, the InnoDB commit order inside InnoDB has to be the same as the bin log commit order. But the problem is that first you have to prepare the transaction inside InnoDB, then you allocate the GTID and you write the, the bin log record, and then you commit inside InnoDB. But that means that you first prepare the InnoDB transaction, and now you allocate the GTID. But now you can no longer put the GTID inside the transaction for the table inside InnoDB because you already prepared and closed the transaction. So that's uh, one reason. Yeah. Are there a performance for that uh, approach? And negatively, that time, 10 years, cost of writing to a table? Yes. Yeah. You checked that in MySQL or the benchmark? Yeah. And it was a big overhead, right? It was rather big. Okay. Yeah. So that's another reason. Bin log events to exploit that your ingenious work. Yeah, you could uh, make sure bin log events use it to, to from. How do you mean? Uh, I, I forgot now. Do we have okay. a GTI as an argument to find? Uh -huh, right? yeah, Starting yeah. from. Maybe, but we could have it now. Uh, plus, yeah, and my scope bin log too to use these indexes. Uh, it doesn't. You, you did do, do this. Yes, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, Brandon actually mentioned that, so that's a good point, yeah. Okay, anything else? Thanks.
for listening.